force you to be in a group because it's a war effort. So, so it's your whole race that you're representing and you have to play with you know, thousands of other people in order to achieve the military objective that you want to achieve. Um, I think that uh, studios are starting to change now and they're trying to create the real experience that the game is about. So if it's a game that you need to work with people in order to succeed and, and achieve the, the, the goal in the gameplay, then you know, try not to please everybody. You know, if, if you're a social person, well, just, you know, Last of Us is a fantastic game. I'm playing it now, and it's a great game, and I'm loving it. But if you play an MMO, and each time someone talks to you, 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 you shut it off, then maybe MMOs are not your type of game. And studios are, <laughs> studios are the same as this now. Uh, so my, uh, I might disagree slightly, but uh, I, I think we see a different pattern. I think we see people determine how they want to play. Um, there's, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and one of them is uh, much of the reason why when we get up here, um, it's a fear of failure, right? Um, people don't like to fail in front of other people, and that's a huge, strong social thing that you have to watch. And so I, I think the way we, we tend to take this is we want you as developers to play together because if you play together, once you've started hated us, or hating us, but you like those people you're playing with, you'll stick around in the game, which is social ties are the ones that bind. But in that initial uptick, there's that fear of failure that a lot of people have, and so then they kind of want to play alone. They kind of want to start to gain mastery of the game before they're willing to go out into it. And there's a certain comfort in being in a place that's living and thriving and not really talking to anybody. There's a certain thing that makes that world feel very dynamic sometimes. So our job is to get people talking, but we can't force that on you because the minute we try to force that on you is the minute you cut it off and say, ah, it's not for me. So we're trying to get more people to be social, and that's kind of our job and task. I'll actually give a very um, uh, concise but a little complex design answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, what do you do is people do what you incent them to do. Um, if you're going to incent grouping, then what you want to do is incent people to play in a skilled group. If you force them to play in a skilled group, for instance, and every time you're in a group that is not skilled, you feel like your time's wasted and you, and you quit. And so, to make it be in a pickup group kind of scenario or an unskilled group scenario, you need to put massive incentives to do that group play. But, if you're playing not in a pickup group, if you're playing in a preformed group you know, of people who are very skilled, that means the game is trivial now because it's been balanced around those sort of groups and they're just reaping in nothing but the best rewards in the game. And cutting that Gordian knot of design is non-trivial, and so you know most games don't hit it quite right. Um, and so that ends up basically either over incenting uh, solo play or over incenting group play, but it's easier to balance for it solo. But I think that's actually the real reason why that's kind of that way, truth be told. Mm -hmm. Different territory to territory, too, by the way. Rule number 66% of people play solo, mostly in US and Europe, uh, uh, higher in China, lower in Korea, you know, and there's societal reasons around that as well. And some of the reason is because of the games that we built. Um, we spent a lot of time working on, um, uh, you know, kill stuff, get loot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's not necessarily a great way to get people to actually interact with each other. We have all, like we keep mentioning, or at least I keep mentioning, there's many different kinds of players in these games. And they have lots of different ways that they should be able to succeed. Well, the key is to make sure that those different uh, methods are, are things that other players want. Like if you, if you want to support crack how? I played a lot of MMOs. All of you here probably played a lot of MMOs. And the number of them where crafting actually mattered is pretty damn few. Um, and so uh, if, you, if you want crafting to be part of your game, you have to have social reasons for other players to be, be able to talk to those different crafters. If you want exploration to be a cool part of the game, then there needs to be some kind of benefit to other players well, for exploring the world and knowing something special about it. And these, these kinds of things are not infrastructures that we have uh, spent a lot of time building in the past. Um, we could probably do a lot better in the future. Google Wildstar Pass. I agree, so I can see another place that's not talk. It has your time to plug it. So, you know, I think a lot of this comes back from starting. <laughs> uh, a lot of it was building games with a lot of resources, and the players were fighting over those resources. And then as we've kind of evolved and taken away some of those hardships, and um, we still had some resources that were fighting over whether people are fighting over monsters or you know, resource nodes or just things in the world or places, 
Uh, and when you're fighting with other players, that's something you want to do sometimes, but not always. And so a lot of MMOs have driven players away from each other to go find a little corner of a map or something for them to just feel like they're able to get the resources at the speed that they want. And you know, I think it's definitely something that we put a lot of effort into, but I see a lot of MMOs um, trying to kind of just pull that apart and make it so that people are happy to see each other and that they're not as much fighting over those resources unless they want them to fight over those resources in a big, you know, large scale combat zone or things like that. And so I think that resource management is kind of something that grew up from the older MMOs that we kind of built up on as we've been building this castle that is sunk in the swamp on top of the other castle. Um, <laughs> and so we picked up some of those old systems and those old things. And you know, we have to kind of always relook at every system. And you know, MMOs are just lots of pieces. And sometimes um, some of the pieces that we're working with aren't what we wanted, and um, it leads to some of that behavior. And you know, players like to play in a lot of different ways, and a lot of players who like to play by themselves for a lot of the reasons that everyone's bringing up. And so it's something that we're always trying to encourage people to play together, but not force. And some of that interaction you know, is kind of a tricky balance. You know, and at the end of the day, balancing something that one player playing one thing is very easy. Balancing something that one player or two or three or ten or fifty um, is very difficult matrix and it's just harder to get that balance right. So we kind of lend towards things that are easier uh, and sometimes and that can lead to some of that same behavior. I said, I want to thank you for coming, but don't get up yet. I apologize to the last of you guys. We have five minutes left and I want to give these gentlemen some time to, to plug what they're here for. Uh, so I apologize. Um, we'll go ahead and start with Isaiah. Why don't you tell us about what's going on with Gilmore Studio here at PAX? Uh, sure, we've got a big uh, PvP tournament that we're doing uh, here at PAX, and uh, you know, as always, we're constantly cranking out as much content as humanly possible uh, in a really uh, rapid succession of once every two weeks, and that's kind of been what we've been working on really heavily, and trying to take anything and everything we hear from people, and uh, we we'll take the feedback and do it again, a lot of things that we're talking about getting that closer interaction with your audience. And where's the PvP tournament? Uh, the PvP tournament, we have a big party of our Renaissance Hotel, and uh, we're going to be doing the PvP tournament every month. So EverQuest Next and EverQuest Next uh, Landmark are the, the big things that we're, uh, that we're working on right now. Landmark comes out this winter, um, and uh, I think we're bringing a lot of new ideas to the genre. We're certainly putting them together in a different mix than what we've ever seen before, which is, um, is something that we really wanted to do, because back in uh, Back when, when uh, so we put together EverQuest, they basically put a bunch of ideas that were out, existed out there in the industry into a shape that nobody had ever seen before. We built something that was new and it was cool enough that uh, it kind of sustained the genre for a long time. And, uh, and we're trying to do that around this time around too. Interconnect the players a lot better. Um, create all kinds of moment-to-moment uh, -moment gameplay that's just really fun and visual. And if you haven't checked it out, uh, look at the everquestnext.com site because I can't bring it up in five minutes. Just uh, uh, take a look at it. And there's all kinds of stuff there that should pique your interest. And then participate in the roundtable. We're really serious about working with you guys to build the next game. The, what I'm doing with the show is I actually flew up an hour and a half before this started. I'm going to catch a four o'clock flight, so I'm literally here to go check out everybody to make sure it's not actively on fire. You guys that much. Because that's a fun panel. The, um, uh, my guys have a booth. Uh, go check out the booth, play the game. If it is good, tell us the parts that are good. If it sucks, tell us the part that sucks. It's the, soft! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that's the part that's good. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right, so uh, we are on the uh, Fourth Fourth Convention Center. It's Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, you know, what we hope. Uh, more than me getting up here talking, it's just that you get in, uh, you play the game. If you haven't signed up for beta, uh, please sign up for beta. But uh, <laughs> I have a few in my pocket. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, honestly, just, uh, I'd love to see you at the booth. I mean, I know, I know it's a line, but uh, come up there, give me a play. And again, like Jeremy just said, tell us what you think. And that's the most important thing. Uh, and hopefully, some of the things you've seen discussed here today that we've talked about, uh, you'll see in the game. Um, our game is uh, the Warhammer 3000, the Eternal Crusade. Uh, our game is uh, to be launched in 2015, but um, you know, we have a very uh, gun hole strategy of deciding not to have any marketing uh, department or networking. So the, the game is marketed by the devs. So all the people you're talking with from are the devs, and actually, uh, the other part of the marketing is you guys doing it uh, by involving yourself. 
and it's the only time and the last time I'm going to say that because after that you have to be bright and think about it. Uh, we've launched right now, just this minute, an ARG. And uh, so I'm just going to tell you something if you want to participate. You know what ARGs are, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a mystery that you have to break. And the only thing I'm going to tell you right now is that take your data slate and check for a warp signature in the air. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you. And uh, the people that will break the ERG, uh, it's going to take, I think it's, from my experience, it's going to take at least two or three days to break the ERG. You're going to get a lot of goodies from me. And uh, you have to come back to me with the, with the right breaking code. But uh, have fun. Everybody pull out your cell phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you guys for coming. This has been a more of the YouTube online games channel. It was the last, as always. Now get out.